Okay, I'm going to show you how to use the Leap Motion with Isadora using an app that I've got here. Um, I can't show you the Leap Motion plugged in, but um, I'll put a link in the description. There's only one type of Leap Motion, it's quite small. It plugs in via USB 3. The first thing you're going to want to do is when you plug it in, um, install everything it says. And when you plug it in, it should come up here with a little green light. Um, sometimes it doesn't always show up and you have to resume tracking and um, there's lots of settings you can look at um, but that's not really what this is about I am using an app called OSC Motion which will launch and here it is now it will work straight away I've just put my hand right in front of it and there I am moving my hand about it will detect both hands so there's my thumbs moving and there's the rest um, and it gives you lots of information about the OSC here, uh, frame rates and all sorts. It can get a little bit confused, I think, because if you put your hand in here and then click, you can move around the space, which is great. Um, it shows you depth and things like that, uh, which is fine. It can get a little bit confusing, um, so you need to remember where you are. I don't often touch that, so I'm going to put that back so it's front on. Uh, people who have messaged me and asked how to get this working, I found most of the time it's because you need to actually put an IP address in here. Now because we are wanting to keep the information, the data, the OSC data inside the computer, we use something called a local host. Um, and local host is the same for every PC, uh, PC computer, I believe. It must be on Mac because that's all I ever use. And it's 127.0.0.1. And as it says, if you hit enter, it then asks for a port. Now this port needs to match up with Isadora. Now I can't actually remember what port I've got currently set on Isadora. So I'm going to open it now. Oh, there we are, it's already open. Let me just sort my space out. So there we go. And Isadora preferences. I go to MIDI slash net. And I've got port 8338. Uh, it's normally 1234 by default, so I've obviously done something here. So 8338. So if I just tab back to OSC motion and type in 8. Double three, eight, and press enter. So it's correct, it's now sending OSC data, which is great. So back to Isadora. I've closed down the preferences, I believe. Yep, okay. Now what we're gonna wanna do is set up the stream. So stream set up under communications. If we cl click auto detect, and then put my hand in front of the leap motion, it springs to life, okay? And you'll see all these numbers change. Now you can leave this on if you want, but um, it's up to you. I'm still waving my hand over the top of it. And if I take off auto detect, the numbers now stop. So here we can see fader one, two, three, X, Y, and Z. It basically detects um, each finger is a fader. I think it's because the app is kind of designed to be used with Touch OSC, um, which is another app that's used for iPad, which which it doesn't doesn't really matter. But if I use, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one finger. So I'm, as if I'm going to be pointing at the screen here. So if I click Auto Detect and put one finger right over the leap motion, you'll see that only these are moving, which is X, Y, and Z. So as I'm moving my finger and pointing at the screen, it's spitting out data. Might be a little bit jumpy because I'm recording the screen here for HD, but you can see what's happening there. Whereas if I put my whole hand in, everything comes to life, all five faders or five fingers. So that's fine. I'm going to renumber ports. Uh, so X, Y, and Z of one finger are going to be port one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'm going to click OK. Then I need an OSC listener. And I'm going to copy and paste that using the standard C and V. 
that's Apple C and Apple V. And I'm going to change these to channel 1, 2, and 3. And now when I move my finger, I get this information. So over the years I've said this plenty of times, but these are just numbers. You can do whatever you want with these numbers. What that is basically tracking is the first finger that I put over the top of the leap motion. And as I move it about, it can tell how far left and right I am, up and down, and also z-axis, which is depth. So, what do you want to do with this stuff? Well, it's totally up to you. I mean, a very basic example is using a mixer. So I could have two videos going in here, one and two, and I could change this mix amount. Now to mix the video, it would make sense to use the left and right. So as I move my finger left and right, it would mix between these two videos. But what we can see here is these values are only really they're going from minus one, if my finger all the way to the left, to positive one. And the mix amount here goes from zero to 100. So there's a number of ways of doing this, and I find this is the best limit scale value. So what you do here is you put the value in at the bottom and you can set the limit minimum and the limit maximum. So I know it's going from minus one to one because I can see that here. It's actually going a little bit over, but that's okay. And the maximum zero to 100, which I know matches here. So that's fine. So what that is doing is just scaling the values. So now when I move my finger to the left, and then to the right, I'm now mixing between two videos. <coughs> Pardon me. So that's how I go about it. OSC is very different. Some values are 0 to 1, some are minus 1 to 1. Um, but again, you just figure out what those values are and scale them. And that's about it. That's how I get OSC motion into Isadora and how I start doing stuff. Um, I hope that helps. Enjoy.